All right, so let's go from the idea of computational thinking to the idea of using computation to learn everything. So we have some examples of trying to use computational literacy to make everything available to all students to, as a tool for learning additional, learning new things, the, the master simulator. Um, there's some wonderful, inspiring examples. I'm a, a big fan of Bootstrap. Bootstrap Algebra, Data Science and Physics, Project Guts, the CT STEM effort at Northwestern. These are all efforts to use computing to improve the way that we teach math and science. We also know that end-user programming is growing. There's this terrific work by Greg Wilson um, around software carpentry uh, and his many collaborators. That the idea is that there's lots of people who are teaching themselves how to program because it's useful in what they do. So we know that in general, for every professional software developer in the United States, there are four to nine end-user programmers. There's lots of people who are learning to program in order to make things work better. And uh, my former student, Brian Dorn, will tell you, these folks are struggling. It is hard to be an end user programmer. They need help in, in figuring out how to learn this programming stuff. Now, there is this idea of computational thinking. It was originally defined by Seymour Papert. It appeared in the Mindstorms book in 1980. It's been popularized by a paper from Jeanette Wing in 2006. Wing claimed that if you know computer science well, it'll influence your everyday activities, like how to pick a cashier line at the supermarket, or knowing how to pack the right things in your backpack. And she talked about the power of abstractions that have been automated. I'd like to offer an alternative idea. Instead, let's think about computation for thinking about everything. So this is the definition of computational thinking from ISTE and the Computer Science Teachers Association. Um, I'm not going to ask you to read all that. Instead, I'm going to summarize it for you. That computational thinking involves knowing how to specify problems, to use automation, to organize and analyze data, to represent data in different ways, to know how to use models and simulations, to know to explore a range of solutions when faced with a problem that you're using a computer for, and that you have efficiency and effectiveness in problem solving, that you can critique your solutions and ask whether or not they're really efficient and effective. So this is computational thinking. I want you to pretend, at least for a minute, for the next few minutes, that we actually could achieve this, that we know how to teach or that we could figure out how to teach everybody computational thinking. This is the definition of engineering thinking from the Royal Academy of Engineering, where they say their goal is for students to know how to make things that work and making things that work better. So if I look at these habits of mind that they recommend for someone who thinks in the way that an engineer thinks, I see words like synthesizing and checking existing solutions. And as we go through this definition of engineering thinking, we see that it really lines up pretty well with our definition of computational thinking. That engineers should know how to specify problems, they should know how to organize and analyze data, they should use different data representations, they should know how to use models and simulations, they explore a range of solutions, and they are concerned with efficiency and effectiveness in their problem solving. Scientific thinking. Um, so there's the Next Generation Science Standards and the Framework for K-12 Science Education that's very popular in the United States. I'm using a particular paper from Krejcik and Merrick from 2012 that talks about what is scientific thinking. The scientific thinking involves thinking about how to define problems, that we develop and use models. We can go down this list and we see that, again, it lines up pretty well to elements of computational thinking that involves specifying problems, organizing, analyzing data, representing data, use of models and simulations, exploring a range of solutions. It turns out there's also this thing called historical thinking. How do people think about historical situations and analyze them? If we consider these, this historical thinking, we see similar things, that it's about specifying problems, organizing and analyzing data, doing data representation. So the argument that I'm making is that computing is a medium for all of these. If we can teach computational thinking, because a computer can be anything else, we can also teach engineering thinking. We can also teach scientific thinking. We can also teach historical thinking. Computing is a literacy for all of these because computer can be the imitation game. The computer can be anything and uniquely adds automation and causal models to help learning. This is my argument that computing is a 21st century literacy. It is a tool for helping us learn all of these important ways of thinking that we've identified in these other disciplines.